going to be using your TV in ten minutes? Afraid so. This goes on for another hour. The tax code says ordinary and necessary. How is a fine for polluting a river an ordinary and necessary business expense? You guys going to be studying here all night? I mean, have you looked at page 383? Uh, Rockingham County versus Claybrook Electric. Have you bothered to read that? Has anyone in this group bothered to read that? Hey. You both leaving? Judge Cunningsburg is lecturing. Yeah, want to join us? <laughs> uh, thanks. Anyways, I just want to use your TV for a couple of hours, if that's okay. Sure. Make yourself at home. Yeah. Listen, there's, uh, there's cold chicken in the fridge if you're hungry. I made it myself, so it might be a little... Dry. Dry. We gotta go. There's cold beer in there, too. Help yourself. Thanks. Trees to me. Sure could have fun playing around with one of those. Look, Ma, come here, Ma. You sick, Ma? Look. Oh, together, most of us. Ford here? Ah, uh, no, you missed him. Damn, I gotta talk to him. You know what will be back? Ah, uh, not for a while. Are you a lawyer too? I'm a law student. Why? Maybe I could talk to you for a minute. It won't be long. Ah, uh, sure. Come on in. Turn this down. Uh, I'm Tom Ford. Eddie Munson. I'm the mechanic down at Coleman's. I worked a couple times in your brother's car. I could tell he was real smart. Right. I just live right down the street. Uh-huh. Listen, I'm not interrupting, am I? Uh, no, it's OK. Hey, sit down. Have a seat. It's all right. Come on. Yeah, here's the thing. I got this apartment. I pay 450 bucks a month, and the place is a dump. And the wallpaper's coming off the wall, the paint's chipping. Every time you flush the toilet, there's a flood. And if that's not bad enough, I got roaches in the kitchen the size of a Buick. So I go to my landlord, and I ask him to fix up the place. And he goes, sure. But he never does. So I ask again. And he still doesn't do anything. Finally, I'm ticked off, right? So I go over to see him today, and I, I go, where in the hell are you going to fix up the damn place? And you know what that lousy guy says to me? He goes, I'll fix it up when I'm good and ready. Well, he sounds like a landlord. Listen, you haven't even heard the capper yet. On top of all this, he tells me he's raising my rent 50 bucks a month. You're kidding. That's what I said. And a few other words I wouldn't care to repeat in polite company. That looks good. Can I have a piece? Help yourself. Anyway, what I want to know is, what can I do? Do I got to take this stuff or what? Well, a landlord has an obligation to keep his property in repair, just like a tenant has an obligation to pay his rent. If he doesn't keep up his part of the contract, it doesn't seem fair that you have to keep up yours. Damn right. So what do I do? 
I don't know. I, if it were me, I would probably withhold rent until the landlord made the required repair. Don't pay the rent? Is that what you would do? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. That ought to get some action. Listen, you don't happen to have another beer around, do you? Sure. I got a beer. Oh, man. Yeah, I never went to college. I was never good with books. But I was good with my hands. So I started off in television repair. Then I figured, I said to myself, what breaks down more often than the television? Any brother knows the answer to that one's cars. In a couple of years, I'm getting my own garage. Only foreign cars. That's where you make your money. <laughs> you know how much it costs to fix a fuel injection system on one of them German imports? $200? $200? <laughs> you couldn't even get your ashtray fixed for $200. What are you watching? Grapes of Wrath. Yeah? I've never seen it. Oh, it's wonderful. It's one of my favorite films. No kidding? Yeah, Henry Fonda. Oh. Fonda, yeah, he was all right. You want to watch it? Why not? For the past hour, gentlemen and ladies, we have been discussing two identical cases in which dissimilar decisions were reached. In each case, a sick person who was nursed back to health promised to pay the person who cared for them the sum of $1,000 in gratitude for their services. In the case in which the Vermont court found for the defendant maintaining that the mere promise of payment was not enforceable. Whereas a Georgia court, reviewing an identical situation, found for the plaintiff, including that a promise of payment constituted a contractual obligation. Now, the question I put to you is what conclusion can be reached to justify such a variance the outcome of these two cases. Mr. Ford, perhaps you have some thoughts on the subject? I believe that in cases of gratuitous promise, when technical analysis fails, we have to consider the situation in a broader spectrum. In the Vermont case, the mores of New England rely heavily upon a written contract. However, in the antebellum South, a man's word is held to be his bond. So I would say, that the two courts reach different decisions based upon varying local traditions. Therefore, we may conclude that in cases where a gratuitous promise situation obtains, the law is not entirely rigid. Local custom must be considered. That was very well thought out, Mr. Ford. Soloway. You feeling lucky? Why? A bunch of us are getting together a game of poker. You want to play? I don't know how to play. You're kidding. Four years of college and you never learned how to play poker? No. So you've had a very deprived childhood. I know. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will teach you how to play poker. I don't know. I've never been very good with cards. Come on, it's fun. Besides, you're really smart. You'll catch on quick. Well, uh, no, 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 no. Soloway, besides being fun, poker can be very profitable. I made 500 bucks on it last year. Come on, what do you say? The whole thing just makes me so nervous. I mean, uh, gambling and everything, it's so illicit. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get into any trouble or anything, would I? I'll give you a crash course. Okay, next game you're in, all right? Now, the important thing is that the oil is hot, but not too hot. Then you stir-fry the chicken quickly until it's lightly brown, uh -huh. and then you add the vegetables, which you've cut on the diagonal, and toss them with a shake of soy sauce until they're just tender, but crisp. Soggy vegetables are anathema to Chinese cooking. You don't give a damn about this, do you? Sure I do. Listen, in uh, Thatcher versus the state of Massachusetts, do you remember if the Supreme Court upheld the appellate ruling? I am preparing the best meal we've had around in this place in a long time, and all you care about is Thatcher versus the state of Massachusetts. Yes, they upheld it. Would you get that, please? Ah. Eddie. Hey, how's it 
How you doing? You want to know how I'm doing? I'll tell you how I'm doing. This is an eviction notice. No kidding. I thought my landlord was going to fix up my place, not throw me out of it. What do you expect, Eddie? It says here you didn't pay the rent. Tell me about it. Okay, now you guys know the law. So you got to advise me what to do. Oh, Eddie, we're, we're still students. We're not allowed to give legal advice. Oh, yeah? Then what the hell was your brother doing when he told me not to pay my rent? What are you talking about? A couple of weeks ago, I came by to see you, and you weren't here. So your brother... Tom. Yeah, Tom. He said the best way for me to get my landlord to fix up my apartment was not to give him any dough. So that's what I did. I took his advice, and now I'm out on the street. So you guys better tell me what I'm supposed to do. Legally, I mean. I told you, we can't give legal advice. Don't tell me that. Tell your brother. Hey, Eddie, I'm sorry. You know, I think Tom may have made a little mistake. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm gonna see he pays for that little mistake. I don't understand how you could have been so stupid. You know a law student isn't allowed to give legal advice. I wasn't giving him legal advice. Well, what were you giving him, the ball scores? Come on, Frank, I was just trying to help the guy out. Oh, you did? Right out of his apartment. Well, I'll go see him. I'll apologize. He needs a place to live, not an apology. Well, I'll talk to his landlord. Come on, give me a break. When you get stuck on something. You know what the problem is? You don't think before you open your mouth. And I'm not just talking about this particular instance. What particular instance are you talking about? Let's just drop it. No, you started something. Finish it. It wouldn't make any difference. Oh, that's great. You know, we've had arguments like this all our lives. You'd always accuse me of something, and they never stick around long enough for me to defend myself. It's the Franklin Ford hit and run. Funny. That's how I'd characterize what happened to Eddie Munson. Come on, Frank. Ever since the first day I came to this school, you haven't done one thing except make me feel like I should have gone someplace else. Hey, does Eddie Munson around? Is he? Where is he? Okay, thanks. Eddie? Ah. Listen, Eddie, I feel terrible about what happened. I got nothing to say to you. I swear I had no idea something like this would happen. Don't give me that job. You really screwed me over. Just get the hell out of here while you still got two good legs. Look, I... if there's anything I can do, talk to your landlord, anything. Mr. Sakina, don't you think eviction's a pretty strong reaction just because one of your tenants wants you to fix up his place? I didn't force Eddie to withhold his rent, Mr. Ford. As you well know, I'm well within my rights to evict him. That's true, but he didn't know what he was doing. I was the one who suggested it. Oh, really? Well, then I offer you my thanks. Yeah, Eddie Munson was hardly a model tenant. I'm glad to be rid of him. Now I can get a decent rental on the place. You can't blame Eddie for the rent control laws. I don't blame him. But he was only paying four fifty a month for that apartment. When I advertised it for eight hundred dollars a month, the phone was ringing off the hook. Then there's no way you'd consider letting him have his apartment back. Too late. It's already rented. Tom, I've been tutoring Soloway in poker. We're going to have a practice game. You want to help out? Uh, I got to study. Thanks anyway. got to study. Nottingham's on the phone. She says Kingsfield wants to see you in his office right away. I'm Tom Ford. I'm here to see Professor Kingsfield. You better go right in. They're waiting for you. Hey. Mr. Ford. I'd like you to meet Mr. Norman Deland. 
How do you do, sir? Mr. Deland represents the Massachusetts Bar Association, and he's here in connection with a complaint that has been lodged against you. A complaint? You may sit down. Mr. Deland has some questions he would like to ask you. A uh, complaint has been filed against you by Mr. Edward Munson. Oh, no. Are you acquainted with Mr. Munson? I met him a couple weeks ago. Well, during your meeting with Mr. Munson, did you uh, discuss... It wasn't a meeting. I was alone at my brother's apartment, and he came by to see him. Mr. Ford, during this time, did you and Mr. Munson ever discuss his ongoing difficulties with his landlord? He told me he was having problems getting his landlord to fix up his apartment. Uh, so you, you did discuss Mr. Munson's problem? I don't understand. I feel like I'm on trial here. This is not an interrogation. This is an inquiry, Mr. Ford. Uh, Intent of which is to discover whether you offered legal advice to Mr. Munson. I didn't. Well, that's what we hope to determine. Now, Mr. Munson says that uh, you told him that seeing as though the landlord was violating his responsibility, that Mr. Munson was not obliged to pay his rent. Well, I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what well, I said. Le leaving aside the precise wordage, Mr. Ford, was that the thrust of your conversation? Kind of, but somehow everything has gotten twisted. I wasn't trying to make myself out as a lawyer. Mr. Munson just told me his problem, and I told him what I would do if I were in the same situation. So you, you did advise Mr. Munson to withhold his rent payment? It's not that black and white. I mean, if I were a medical student and a friend had a headache, and he asked me what I thought he should do, and I told him to take aspirin, would that make me guilty for practicing medicine without a license? Well, let's suppose that friend uh, followed your advice, took the aspirin, and then had a severe allergic reaction. Then what, Mr. Ford? I don't know. That's exactly right, Mr. Ford. You don't know. Uh, is there anything else that you want to tell us? Look, I didn't think I was giving him legal advice. I mean, he was telling me about his problems, but we talked about a lot of other things. I mean, he, he talked about the garage he worked in, his plans for the future. We had a couple beers and watched a movie on TV, and that's all. Ford, would you wait outside for a few moments? Please. Mr. Delan. Yes, sir. They're ready for you now, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, after some discussion, Mr. Deland and I reached the conclusion that your breach of ethics was the result of inexperience rather than intent. I'm going to recommend to the association that we not pursue this case any further. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mr. Kingsfield, I uh, appreciate your help. And, sir, I'd like to thank you, too. Mr. Ford, sit down. Before you leave this room, it's vital that you understand the seriousness your error of judgment. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have any knowledge of the laws in the state pertaining to vacancy, decontrol? Well, I know... Uh, not exactly, sir. I thought not. And yet, you presume to advise Mr. Mark. Law is a very complicated system, as you are just beginning to discover. And there are good reasons why we require a student to spend three years in intensive training. The 
therefore, that student can represent a client. I know, Professor. I didn't know I was giving legal advice. Believe me. You and I both know that you are utterly unprepared to serve a client. But you must be mindful that people ignorant of their legal rights often look to someone with legal knowledge for assistance. There is a vast difference between being a student and being a lawyer. But a frightened member of the public often fails to make that distinction. Yes, sir. The laws protecting the public from receiving uninformed counsel were not created as a mere matter of etiquette. They were created to safeguard the public from aberrations such as yours. Do you understand? <laughs> I do, Professor. Believe me, I do. You may go, Mr. Ford. I don't think it's ever been done before. As a matter of fact, if anyone had ever done it, they probably would have put up a statue honoring him. Oh, come on. I can't believe that in the entire history of this school, no one has ever gotten the law review in early. Listen, Golden came close once, and the typesetter went on the fritz. <laughs> I always wondered what you'd look like cast in bronze. Dude! Clark, Ellison loused up the antitrust article. She didn't realize you wanted the cases summarized. There are 22 cases to summarize. All right, let's get to the files and pull those cases. It goes to the printers tomorrow. There goes your statue. There goes the first free afternoon I've had all year. <laughs> hey, guys, wait up. Hey, I heard about your visit from the state bar. Once again, you lucked out. Yeah, it was touch and go there for a while. Look, I've been all through the library, and I can't find the procedural rulings regarding a defendant's right to sue the state when a higher court has reversed a lower court's decision. I can't find the relevant precedents anywhere. I suggest you hightail it back to the library and keep looking. I know, but where? Hey, we don't have the time to do your homework for you. Sorry I bothered you. Tom, I think I have a summary of the cases you need down at the uh, law review. Why don't you go on down there? I'll be down there in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Hart. Why you make it so easy on him? Nobody ever did me a favor my first year. Wouldn't it have been nice if somebody had? You know, I'm not doing the research for him. I'm simply making the material available. He still has to read a couple of hundred pages. You know, and forgive me for bringing this up, but you haven't given your brother an inch since he got here. I've got to go. Oh, don't I even deserve the courtesy of a reply? Hart, frankly, what's between my brother and me is none of your damn business. Hart, do you remember if Rockefeller's congressional testimony was included in the Standard Oil deposition? You better refer back to the congressional record. Right. It is really crazy in here today. No, unfortunately, this is just the usual chaos. Isn't anyone here familiar with the alphabet since when does tort come before moot? Listen, Hart, I really appreciate you making time for me. I know you got your hands full. Here. Now you've got your hands full, too. Listen, um, I've already been shot down once, so tell me if I'm over the line, but, uh, you and Frank are, uh... Yeah, I know. We're not exactly Damon and Pythias, are we? <laughs> I don't know what it is with him. It's like I'm an irritant or something. You know, I have never seen anyone set him off like this. Yeah, I probably should have followed my first instinct and gone to another school. I mean, I didn't expect him to welcome me with open arms, but so much time has passed since we've been together, I'd hoped we'd gotten past all this animosity. Do you have any brothers? Sister. A sister. That would have made it easy. I doubt if my father would have knocked himself out trying to make a daughter into a carbon copy of himself. Because that's what he did with Frank. You know, chip off the old block, that crap. We grew up in suburban Connecticut. I mean, it's the world capital of emotional poverty. Parents worried if kids were too happy, if they worried at all. Uh, Frank resented it. We both did. He just takes out on me what he won't take out on our folks. 
But sometimes, and I know this sounds awful, but sometimes I get the feeling that he's just waiting for me to fall on my face. I am sorry. Sorry? What are you sorry about? If it wasn't for you, I'd still be wandering around the stacks. Hart, I can't find Rockefeller's testimony anywhere. It isn't in the index. Is that where you've been looking, the index? Supposed to check the bibliography. Look, I'll be there in a minute. In the meantime, you pull Holmes' uh, dissent on the majority rulings? All right. Listen, Hart, let me get out of your hair and thanks again. My pleasure. And as for Frank and me, we'll either work this through or we won't. Name of the game is five card stud, one down, four up. Who's light? Somebody didn't ante. Oh, it's all the way. Probably me. Ace bet. They say luck's a lady. I'm in for 50 cents. Uh, I fold. What are you adding, Soloway? This isn't blackjack. Soloway! I'm sorry. Okay, um, I'm in for a quarter. Hey, either you see the 50 cents or you're out of the game, Soloway. Is that fair? Them's the rules. Whose rules? Bells? Right. Who is it? Police. Yeah, sure. Who is it? It's the police. Oh, my God. I knew it. What are you doing, it's son? We're right it's in the middle of a head, you way. moron! It's all way. I'm looking for Thomas James Ford. I'm Tom Ford. What is this? A notice to appear for arraignment. I found it. Section 2233, Business and Professions Code. Practicing law without a license, a misdemeanor, punishable by up to six months in jail and a $10,000 fine. Six months in jail? It's a serious offense. Oh, thank you very much. Whose side are you on? I'm not on anybody's side. You can say that again. Hey, could you guys table this until later? We've got more pressing things. Like an arraignment? I've got to find a lawyer. Maybe you should call our father. No, thanks. Hey, hey, where are you going? There's a whole law school out there. Somebody's got to know the name of a good attorney. I do. I'm in it, but good, aren't I? I don't understand why the assistant district attorney allowed it to go to arraignment in the first place. You've already been exonerated by the Bar Association, correct? That's what Deland told me he was going to recommend. Who knows? Maybe he changed his mind. That doesn't seem very likely. Well, somebody's got it in for Tom. I mean, I can't believe that Munson would be this vindictive. Never. But never underestimate a man with a grievance. My guess is your friend Munson filed a complaint with the DA's office, and some clerk probably took it upon himself to exceed his authority. God, I hope you're right. I'll try to get hold of the assistant district attorney. Things got a little out of hand, that's all. Once the wheels start turning, it's hard to stop them, okay? Now, there's going to be some unpleasantness. I thought you said everything would be okay. It will, but you're going to be booked and arraigned. Golden, are you sure booked for misdemeanor? Anytime the DA's office files a notice for arraignment or an arrest warrant, there's a booking. It can be scary, but just remember, Tom, it's routine, okay? We'll work it out. I'll call you later. And in the meantime, don't even give anybody directions, OK? <laughs> Bye. According to Ms. Warren, Mr. Ford, you were charged with a violation of the Business and Professions Code, Statute 2233. How do you plead? Not guilty. I'm going to set a trial date for April 15th. Is that agreeable with counsel? Oh, agreeable, Your Honor. April 15th is fine with the state, Your Honor. And I'm going to release the defendant on his own recognizance. Does the state have any objections? No objections, Your Honor. So ordered. All right. Let's recess for lunch. Well, where do I go from here? You go back to school. Now you can't and I'll go and have a few words with my esteemed colleague. Okay. I want to find out why he never returned my phone calls. 
Drop by the office later this afternoon. Maybe we can still do a deal. By the way, my name is Connor, not O'Connor. Your paper uh, misspelled it last time. Thanks. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. Hey, Miss Golden. Sorry I didn't get a chance to return your telephone calls, but I've been so damn busy. Yes, sir, it is a pity. I felt certain that if I had the opportunity to present the facts, you'd agree that what we are dealing with here is essentially a minor indiscretion. No, sir, I don't agree at all. I don't think there's anything minor about a student's practice uh, passing himself off as a licensed attorney. My client never represented himself as an attorney. Well, I believe that's an issue for the court to decide. As far as my office is concerned, when Mr. Munson first came to me, I not only saw merit in his complaint, I also saw an opportunity to send a clear message to the people in this community to beware of unscrupulous persons practicing professions for which they have not been certified. I would hardly call Mr. Ford unscrupulous. He happens to be an exceptional student at what I might point out is a highly prestigious institution. Well, I think that's a matter of opinion. I prefer to stick to the facts. Mr. Munson is a simple, hardworking man, born and raised in this city, finds himself being taken advantage of by a presumptuous law student. And you don't see that as an opinion. What I see, Mr. Golden, is an elitist attitude personified by the students at that so-called prestigious institution. May I remind you that the school is not the issue here. You're absolutely right. The issue here is the protection of the citizens of this community, and nobody, absolutely nobody, has a right to infringe on that protection. Sounds to me as though you're making a political speech, sir. Well, after all, Mr. Golden, district attorney is an elected official. That hardly gives you the right to indulge in political opportunism, sir. I believe our discussion just came to an end. You may rest assured that this is one case that I intend to see settled in court. Gene, send them right in. Any luck with the DA? Why don't you have a seat, Tom? What happened? Connor absolutely refuses to withdraw the complaint. This is like a bad dream I can't wake up from. Did you explain everything to him? I don't think we're dealing with a man who could be objective in this case. Have a seat. I don't understand. What is, what, what is he, Munson's brother-in-law or something? No, he's just an ambitious politician. An assistant DA? You don't think some fair-minded prosecutor has career hopes like everybody else? Connors, a second-rate lawyer with a limited future, unless he makes a name for himself, and you're the perfect springboard. The town versus gown, it makes good copy. But he took an oath. He's a public servant. Okay. I'm afraid, when it comes to making political hay, the oath is honored more in the breach than in the observance. So, what do we do? I know what I would like to do. I'd like to go into court and beat the pants off of him. But? But I don't know if that's a solution to your problem. It's expensive and time-consuming. There'll be uh, discovery, preparation, affidavits, court appearances. No, I barely have enough time to get through the day now. Then, of course, there's always the outside possibility that we can lose this case. Lose the case? Tom, once we get before a judge or a jury, anything can happen. Are you telling me I actually might wind up in jail? It's a possibility. Especially if it becomes a cause celeb with the press. We're at the mercy of a system where human behavior isn't predictable. If it were, the charges wouldn't have been filed in the first place. But in any event, if we lose, you can say goodbye to a legal career. Oh, my God. I mean... All right, so how do we stay out of court? I'll keep working on Connor. But our best chance is if someone convinces Munson to drop the charges. Who? I just tried to apologize to him and he tossed me out of his garage. Well, someone will just have to change his mind, Tom. I'm staying out of it. You've got to do it. Why? Why me? Because you're the only one who can talk to Munson. He likes you. Sure, he loves me. All right, I'll give you a reason you don't want to hear. Your brother needs you? If he needs me, then why'd he go running to you? Obviously, because he knew you were going to react exactly the way you're reacting. Hey, he got himself into this. He can get himself out of it. What am I, my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. Well, I don't want the job. Then you better tell him that once and for all. Because whether you're willing to admit it or not, he does need you. I was a lot better off before he showed up here. 
Well, sure you were. You could pretend you didn't have any problems. Family life was perfect. Look, let me tell you something about my brother. He never realized how easy he had it. I was the one my father put all the pressure on. He criticized everything about me from my grades to the way I parted my hair. But good old Tom, he could do whatever he wanted. Well, the exemplary son is no better than the rest of us. Would you listen to yourself? You're actually glad that Tom's in trouble. You don't know what you're talking about. I know that where Tom is concerned, all you can think about is your side of an argument that began years ago. I've seen you be nicer to people on the street than you are to your own brother. Hart, stay out of this. You don't know anything about me. That's for damn sure. Eddie, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm busy. I'll talk. All you have to do is listen. You've got to drop the charges against my brother. You give me one good reason why I should. Because Tom never meant to do you any harm. He was only trying to do you a favor. Some favor. Eddie, what is it you're trying to get out of this? Listen, man. I'm spending half the time in my van and half the time with my sister. Now, all I want is to be recompensed. The DA said I was entitled to that. Did the DA also tell you that publicity could hurt you as much as help you? Or that if you lose, we could file an abusive process suit against you? I'll tell you what. You give me some money to help find a new place, I'll tell them to forget it. I can't do that, Eddie. You guys got a lot of money. So you can afford it. Well, that's not the point. The law might consider that a bribe. And you and I would be in trouble on a felony charge. They could come down on us for settling it between us like that? They could. And you'd be the one who'd be in more trouble, because you brought it up. You see, Eddie, it's easy to make a legal mistake. The landlord's making out, the DA's making out. I'm the only one getting nothing out of this. That's true. And we can help you look for a place. But that's all we can do. Fine. Let's keep it where it is. My brother's life, that's what it is. Come on. No, you come on. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to listen. If you go through with this, my brother is finished. You understand? Finished. No law school, no career. Hey, lighten up. Lighten up? We're talking about somebody's future, not some little game of get the law student. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be out on the street right now. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you'd be honest with yourself, you'd know that you were looking for something for nothing when you came around asking for help. You wanted a little free advice. Well, as they say, it's worth what you paid for it. He said he knew the law. It was an innocent mistake. 
It was like you're asking me for money. You didn't mean anything by it, but you could be punished for it. Now, that wouldn't be fair, would it? Well, that sounds good, but I'm still the one who got beat. By the landlord, not by Tom. Look, Eddie, somewhere you have to find it in yourself to see through this anger and realize you are wrecking someone's life. And that is simply not called for just because you lost your apartment. You meant what you said when you, you said you'd help me find a new place? Absolutely. Even though neither one of us has time to breathe. Yeah, it's a bear to find an apartment. We'll check the student housing. We'll put up ads ourselves. Look at this guy hasn't changed his oil filter in 60,000 miles. Eddie, please. Deal. <laughs> Very well. We should continue this matter a week from Tuesday. Is that suitable, counsel? The state has no objections, sir. I'll see the opposing counsel in my chambers. Told me that I'll find you. Golden, you're wasting your time. There's absolutely nothing you can say to me to make me change my position in the Ford case. What's that? It's a letter from Mr. Eddie Munson requesting that you withdraw all charges against my client. I thought I delivered myself. You coerced my witness! I did no such thing. Your witness signed this letter of his own volition. I don't have to accept this, you know. I, I can go ahead. The case is still the People versus Thomas Ford. Fine. Then we can call Mr. Munson to the stand, and you can tell the jury that as, uh, as uh, far as he's concerned, everything is all right. And you'll look like the vindictive snipe that you are. And the press will have a field day. Have you seen Tom? Well, you can check with Denise. That's her article. James, excuse me. Do you know where Tom is? Haven't you found him yet? No. You want me to help you look for him? <laughs> Where have you been? I've been looking all over the place for you. How come you aren't in class? It's a little hard to concentrate on 19th century tort law when you're up on a misdemeanor. Tom, it's over. What? I had a talk with Eddie, and the DA is dropping the charges. Frank, how did you do it? We Fords can be very persuasive. <sighs> very pig-headed. Look, 
I know I haven't been... It's okay, Frank. No. No, this time I don't want to just hit and run. I want you to listen to me. You know, when I heard that Kingsfield gave you this big compliment in class, you know what I felt? Jealous. That's good. What That's good. What's so good about it? Well, that you're telling me. It doesn't make me feel any better to say it. Because I hate that I have these feelings. I, I hate feeling competitive. Frank, I've got my own share of rotten thoughts, too, and I've got a list of grievances as long as your arm. But those feelings eventually subside, and I always, always come back to being uh, resigned that we're brothers. Ha, ha, ha.